Hello, my name is Jason Collins. This video presents a series of mathematical examples of the application of prospect theory. Example 1. A 50-50 gamble. Suppose Albi has the following reference-dependent value function. V of x equals x to the power of 1 half, where x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative 2 times negative x to the power of 1 half, where x is less than 0. x is the realised outcome relative to the reference point. Assume that Albi's reference point is the status quo and that he weights outcomes linearly. Albi is offered the gamble A, a 50% chance of winning $110 and a 50% chance of losing $100. Will Albi want to play this gamble? To determine this, we compare the weighted value of the gamble with the weighted value of rejecting the offer. The weighted value of the gamble is V of A equals P1 times V of X1 plus P2 times V of X2 which equals 0.5 times v of 110 plus 0.5 times v of negative 100, which equals 0.5 times 110 to the power of 1 half, minus 0.5 times 2 times 100 to the power of 1 half, which equals minus 4.76. Alby will not want to play this gamble as it has a negative value he could receive a weighted value of zero by simply not playing. The reason for this negative value is that Alby is loss averse. The loss of $100 is given twice the weight of an equivalent gain. The following chart illustrates. The horizontal axis is the outcome X relative to the reference point. The vertical axis is the value of each outcome. The S-shaped curve represents Albi's value function with a concave curve in the game domain and a convex curve in the loss domain. The curve is steeper in the loss domain due to loss aversion. The gain of $110 and the loss of $100 and their respective values are marked. I have drawn a straight line between the two outcomes. The weighted value of the two outcomes will be on this line. As the probability of each outcome is 50%, the expected value of A, $5, is halfway between the two outcomes. If we project to the straight line from the expected value, we get V of A, a probability weighted average of the two possible outcomes from the bet. V of A is negative, indicating that the gamble has a lower weighted value than remaining at the status quo. Accept or reject after loss. Suppose Alby loses his wallet containing $100. He feels bad about it and perceives it as a loss. His reference point is unchanged at the original status quo, but the amount of money he will have after any outcome is $100 less than otherwise. Would he be willing to take gamble A now? After losing $100 but not changing his reference point, he has two possible outcomes relative to his reference point. A gain of $10, winning $110 minus the lost money in the wallet, and a loss of $200, losing $100 and also losing his wallet. The weighted value of gamble A is now V of A equals P1 times V of X1 plus P2 times V of X2, which equals 0.5 times V of 110 minus 100 plus 0.5 times V of negative 100 minus 100 which equals 0.5 times 10 to the power of 1 half minus 0.5 times 2 times 200 to the power of 1 half, which equals negative 12.56. The value of not playing the gamble involves remaining with a loss of $100. V of not A equals V of negative 100, which equals negative 2 times 100 to the power of 1 half, which equals negative 20. He will now want to play the gamble as it has a greater value than staying with his current loss. The gamble becomes attractive as it allows recovery of the loss. Albi is risk-seeking in the loss domain. He would even accept a 50-50 gamble to win $100, lose $100 with an expected value of zero. 
The choice is illustrated in the following chart. The two possible outcomes, $200 below the reference point and $10 above the reference point, plus their values, are marked. The weighted value of those two possible outcomes is also marked with the expected value E of A projected onto the line between the two outcomes to give V of A. It is visually apparent that V of A is above the value of a loss of $100, the outcome if Alby does not accept the gamble. As a result, Alby wants to accept the gamble. Accept or reject after adaptation to loss? Alby has now adapted to his loss of $100. The new reference point is the new wealth level incorporating the loss wallet. Would he take gamble A now? We are now back to an identical situation as when he was first offered the gamble with his reference point as the status quo. He will not want to partake in the gamble. Accept or reject after a win? Alby wins $10,000 at the casino. He feels good about his win, so his reference point remains at his wealth excluding the win. Would he take gamble A now? With the additional $10,000, the value of the gamble is V of A equals P1 times V of X1 plus P2 times V of X2, which equals 0 0.5 times V of 10,000 plus 110 plus 0 0.5 times V of 10,000 minus 100, which equals 0 0.5 times 10,110 to the power of one half, plus 0 0.5 times 9,900 to the power of one half, which equals 100.02. The value of not playing the gamble is V of not A equals V of 10,000, which equals 10,000 to the power of one half, which equals 100. The gamble is now attractive. Albi is less risk averse at a higher wealth. Further, the gamble is entirely in the gain domain, meaning that loss aversion does not affect the decision. The following chart, not drawn to scale, illustrates. Alby becomes increasingly risk-neutral as we move further into the gain domain. You can see this through the value function curve becoming approximately straight. As a result, at a high enough wealth, the positive value bet becomes attractive. V of A is above the value of the certain outcome, V of 10,000. A 60-40 gamble. Paddy makes decisions in accordance with prospect theory, has wealth $300 and value function. V of x equals x to the power of one half, where x is greater than or equal to zero, and negative two times the negative of x to the power of one half, where x is less than zero. Assume Paddy weights probabilities linearly. Paddy is offered the following bet A, a 60% probability to win $150 a 40% probability to lose $100. Does Paddy accept bet A? Paddy compares the value of taking versus not taking the bet. V of A equals P1 times V of X1 plus P2 times V of X2, which equals 0 0.6 times V of 150 plus 0 0.4 times V of negative 100, which equals 0 0.6 times 150 to the power of one half minus 0 0.4 times 2 times 100 to the power of one half, which equals negative 0 0.652. The value of not taking the bet is zero. Paddy would have no change from his reference point. Paddy rejects the bet as V of A is less than the V of zero equals zero that Paddy could get by simply rejecting the bet. He rejects the bet due to his loss aversion and the diminishing sensitivity to gains. The loss is weighted double that of an equivalent gain, outweighing both the larger potential gain and 60% probability. The following figure shows Paddy's value function, the bets and the value of the bets. The figure illustrates that Paddy's rejection is caused by both Paddy's loss aversion and his diminishing sensitivity in the gain domain, which has a larger effect than the diminishing sensitivity in the loss domain due to the larger magnitude of the potential gain. 
Following some bad economic news, Paddy's wealth declines to $150. Paddy cannot get over the loss, so his reference point remains his former wealth of $300. Paddy is offered bet A again. Does Paddy accept the bet? As Paddy is now in the loss domain, the two potential outcomes from the bet are a gain of $0 and a loss of $250. His alternative is remaining at a point $150 below his reference point. Paddy compares the value of taking versus not taking the bet. V of A equals P1 times V of X1 plus P2 times V of X2, which equals 0.6 times V of negative 150 plus 150 plus 0.4 times V of negative 150 minus 100, which equals 0.6 times 0 to the power of 1 half minus 0.4 times 2 times 250 to the power of 1 half, which equals negative 12.649. V of not A equals V of negative 150, which equals negative 2 times 150 to the power of 1 half, which equals negative 24.495. Paddy accepts the bet as V of A is greater than the value of the certain loss of $150. The following figure shows Paddy's value function, the bets and the value of the bets. The figure shows that Paddy accepts the bet as he is risk-seeking in the loss domain. The potential loss of another $100 results in a smaller incremental loss of value than an equivalent win of $100. A gamble in the gain domain. Suppose Bill has the following reference-dependent value function. V of x equals x to the power of one half where x is greater than or equal to zero, and negative two times the negative of x to the power of one half where x is less than zero. x is the change in Bill's position relative to his reference point. What feature of Bill's value function leads to the reflection effect? The power of one half applied in both the gain and loss domain leads to diminishing sensitivity to gains and losses. The value function is concave in the gain domain and convex in the loss domain. This curvature leads to risk-averse behavior in the gain domain and risk-seeking behavior in the loss domain. This change in risk preference between the gain and loss domains is the reflection effect. Bill considers a choice between $100 for certain and Gamble A, involving a 50% chance of winning $250 and a 50% chance of winning nothing. Will Bill prefer the $100 or Gamble A? The weighted value of Gamble A is V of A equals P1 times V of X1 plus P2 times V of X2 which equals 0.5 times V of 250 plus 0.5 times V of 0, which equals 0.5 times 250 to the power of 1 half, plus 0.5 times 0 to the power of 1 half, which equals 7.91. The value of the $100 for certain is V of $100 equals V of 100 which equals 100 to the power of 1 half, which equals 10. As V of $100 is greater than V of A, Bill will prefer the $100 for certain to the gamble. The following chart shows Bill's choices. The possible outcomes from the gamble are 0 and $250. The certain outcome on offer is $100. The expected value of the gamble is $125. The outcomes are in the gain domain. As he is risk averse in the gain domain, the value of the $100 for certain exceeds the weighted value of the gamble. This can be seen through V of A being less than V of $100. Bill will therefore choose the $100 for certain. Bill rejects the gamble because of the diminishing sensitivity to gains. This leads him to be risk averse and reject the higher expected value option of the gamble. As all possible outcomes under our assumed reference point are in the gain domain, loss aversion does not affect his decision.
Note that we do not use the value function for x less than zero in determining Bill's choice. Suppose Bill were to experience a large negative shock to his wealth that does not immediately change his reference point. Could this shock cause him to change his decision concerning the $100 and gamble A? A large negative shock to Bill's wealth would cause him to change his decision concerning the $100 and gamble A. The shock would move the two possible outcomes into the lost domain, where Bill is risk-seeking. For this answer, I am assuming a shock of greater than $250. A smaller shock would change the analysis. The following diagram illustrates the outcomes relative to the reference point. Let L be a large negative number, the loss. The potential outcomes from the gamble are now L and L plus 250. The certain outcome of accepting the $100 is L plus 100. The following diagram illustrates Bill's decision after the shock. The outcomes L, L plus 100, and L plus 250, and their respective values are marked. The expected value of the gamble is L plus 125. The weighted value of the gamble is V of L plus A. Due to the convex curvature of the curve in the loss domain, Bill is risk-seeking. As a result, the utility of the gamble is greater than the utility of the certain outcome. This can be seen in V of L plus A being greater than V of L plus 100. 